now we're going to review a little bit about the dihydrose cycle, which is the one that is a little bit more confusing and I'm getting more emails about. Okay, remember that dihybrid crosses are a cross between two individuals with two traits at the same time. So we are kind of double multiplying within uh, one, uh, only one premise, okay? So let's, again, let's go to your dihybrid worksheet or practice sheet that you have on your packet. And the first one is the one that I'm gonna be using as an example. Hopefully this video can guide you through all the rest by just following the same steps and procedure, okay? So if first one says tall sunflowers are dominant to short, while well, yellow sunflowers are dominant to orange, okay? So what are the two traits that we're looking for? Height and color. Those are the two traits that we're looking, okay? That we're looking at, I'm sorry. So let's cross a plant that is heterozygous for both traits. So plant one is heterozygous for both traits. Now, because we're looking for two aspects, let's use that for height, let's use the letter T, and for color, let's use the letter P. That way we can all be in the same uh, boat with that, okay? So if my parent one is going to be heterozygous for both traits, that means that parent one it's a capital T with a small t next to it because hetero means the same. I mean, means that they're not the same, that they're the mix, okay? So let's start with that. So that is my first trait. So my second trait, which is, we're using the letter P, will be a capital P with a lowercase p. And that is parent one. That parent one I'm gonna cross with parent two. Says we're crossing it with a plant that is heterozygous for height. So that means that the height is going to be the mix. And homozygous, which means the same, homo, the same. So the same type of allele, homozygous dominant. Dominant means what? Capital letters, right. So this one is gonna be capital P, capital P because it is heterozygous for one trait, but homozygous dominant for the second trait. So here are my parent genotypes. This is the answer for that blank that you have in your answer sheet. Now that I have my parent's genotype, I have to look at the variety of allele combinations that it could have, okay? So when I am crossing two traits, I have to see that they are more, uh, options to be available. So that is what we call foil. We are foiling within the same parent all the alleles, okay? So that, the way that I do it is that I'm gonna focus, let me grab a different color, not black. There we go. So we're gonna focus on that very first trait, specifically the first allele for the first trait. And I am going to see that T could be mixed with the capital P. And that is one option. So that T can be combined with that capital P. That is one option. But that big T, that first allele, can also be combined or mixed with the small one. So that will give me a second option. I finished with my first allele. Now I'm gonna look at my second allele. Okay, for my second allele, I do the same thing. This individual uh, allele can be combined with that one, with the first one, which is a capital T, or it could be combined with the second one, okay? Which is, oh, I used the wrong color. Which could be like this. So technically speaking, Parent one is giving me four different options in which their, those alleles can be combined. Let's look at parent two. We're gonna do the same exact same trait. For parent one, we're gonna look at the first allele. Let's look down here. And it can be combined with the actual first allele for the second, which gives me a capital T and a capital P. Then we're gonna look again and we're gonna see that it can be combined with the second option. What situation do we have here? 
Exactly, they're, they're the same because it's a homozygous dominant. So because they're the same, it's not giving me a different option, it's repeating the same option. Okay, so it gives me, it gives me twice that. So I can write it down, but notice that it's exactly the same option. So let's go to the second allele, which is the, cap, the small case or the lower case T, and I'm going to for it. So I'm gonna combine it with the first one, okay? So it will give me a lowercase t with a capital P. And then we're gonna see the same scenario because again, we are talking about being homozygous uh, in that specific um, trait. So this is what we do. So while parent one gives me four option, parent two is, giving me only two. Hopefully you understand that concept because it's homozygous, then it will repeat itself. So while parent one gives me four different variations, parent two gives me just two, okay? And this is important because this is what we're gonna be using when we actually do our uh, Punnett square. Now, because this is dihybrid cross, our Punnett square is gonna be slightly bigger. So instead of four squares, we have to create it being, let me see where I can put it, where I can still see it, okay? It's gonna be uh, 16 squares. So in this particular case, let's use parent one for um, the top and the alleles combination for parent one. Let me check here. Yes, it was a capital T with a uppercase T or capital P a capital T with a lowercase p, a lowercase t with a capital P, and a lowercase t with a lowercase p. Now, this is the one that gives me four different variations. Now this parent two gave me only two options, right? It was either capital T with capital P or lowercase t, but still a capital P. Those were the two options. Because these two are repeated, instead of me creating bigger, I'm just going to ignore because it does not offer me any of these. So I'm gonna focus on those eight squares, which makes our lives easier, okay? Now, if we have four, then you have to write them all. But in this particular case, well, it's either this or this, so why create all the squares? Let's leave it like that. Now that I have it set up, now all I do is do the cross multiplication with you guys already know how to do, okay? I always focus on, remember to keep your T's together and your P's, so each allele should be together. Do not put TP, TP, because then it's gonna be crazy for you to count when you're looking at specific phenotypes, okay? So let's go specifically, match your, your T's first, and then match your P's. That makes it easier for you so that you can later visually identify quicker, okay? So keep your T's together, then do your P's together. And we're gonna do the same, which the other one. As you can see, is really not complicated once you get the trick, okay? It's a matter of practice. The more you do it, the easier it is for you to complete, okay? Now that we have our actual Punnett squares completed, or a Punnett square completed, right? We're gonna look at the phenotypic ratio. The phenotypic ratio, phenotypes refers to what are we going to see? So um, in this particular case, I have to see if they're tall or short, or short because we're looking at, remember we're looking at height and we were looking at color. So are they tall and short? Tall, um, I mean, are they tall and yellow? Tall and orange? Or short and yellow? Short and orange. So that is what we are looking. Just by looking, do I have any single one that is in orange? For it to be orange, it had to be lowercase, lowercase. So do I have a possibility? 
there is no possibility of them of the any of the offspring actually being orange so that means they all have to be yellow so i have two phenotypes that are possible they're either tall and yellow or short and yellow. I don't need to look at the options of orange because there's no orange in this play at all. There's no probability of me getting an orange flowers, uh, sunflower. So we're good there. So what percentage am I going to get tall and yellow? For it to be tall and yellow, because both traits are dominant, that means that there has to be a, an uppercase or a capital T for it to be tall. So I'm going to use, like I showed you in class, where we just kind of use a single color to mark it off somehow. So this, is a, this one is definitely tall. This one is definitely tall. This one is definitely tall, but can carry the short trait. This one is also tall. Tall, tall, this one is short, and this one is short. So in this particular case, I have six out of um, eight. So for tall and yellow, I have six out of eight that are going to be tall and yellow. So six out of eight, those of you that are math, math experts, this is a 75%, correct? Yes, I did my math correctly. That's a 75% of them being tall and yellow, which leaves me for short will be the other two. So two out of eight are going to be short and yellow, which is a 25%. Okay, so my phenotypic ratio is three to one. Hopefully you understand that. You can leave it in percentage and I'll be fine with it. Okay, 75% of them being tall and yellow and a 25% of them being short and yellow. So your next question after that one says, if a farmer um, knows that most people want tall and yellow sunflowers, what percentage will he get of what he desires um, if he were to cross the two plants that we just crossed? Okay, so that will be the same if this is the traits that he's looking for as tall and yellow then it's a 75% that if he crosses that, that is what he's gonna get. Now, the second question says, what should be the genotype of the parental generation or the parent flowers if he wants to ensure that all of the flowers are tall and yellow? So if he wants to do all of the flowers that are tall and yellow, then what should he cross? Then the genotype ratio, or the, D, uh, not ratio, the genotype uh, parents should be, if we want it to be tall and yellow, he needs to cross only tall and yellow, homozygous dominant in both traits. And that will definitely ensure that all of the offspring is going to be tall and yellow. So hopefully this explanation will help you. Um, we will meet tomorrow if you have any more questions. See you then.